Hello, this is going to be a short tutorial on the toolbar features in the top right corner of your Google Forms. Now, starting from the left, you have add-ons. And add-ons basically are tools that you can go get from the add-on store um, that give you more functions and features found in Forms. So, for example, GMath allows you to put in um, math expressions that you can't type. Um, form notifications uh, allows you to give uh, other people notifications of when a form is completed and choice eliminator uh, allows you to pull out um, choices uh, or options that get removed inside of your question after X number of people have chosen them um, so these are really cool uh, they can help add uh, function uh, to your form and you can get them and I know I'm skipping on the toolbar by going all the way to the right and click on the dots and go down to add-ons and this is where you get to the add-on market and you can search for tools that can be added to Google Forms for you. Um, since I went to the three bars, we'll stay here. This is where you can undo anything, um, a mistake maybe you made, make a copy of it, uh, print your form, add collaborators, so if you want people to work together on building a form uh, as a team, you can do that. Um, and again, preferences uh, basically is setting the default feature um, in the forms that you build. Okay, the color palette does exactly what it says. It allows you to change the color of your form um, to any kind of background color. Uh, it also lets you go to the picture um, and you can select any kind of picture uh, that you like and set it as the background for your Google form. The eyeball lets you basically preview uh, and look at it as a student so you can see what a student sees, which is nice. Now the pencil um, is there because it knows I'm the creator of this form and I can click the pencil and go back to editing it. And again, a student doesn't see that because they're not the editor or the owner of the form. Um, the most important feature that I can show you is the gear. This is basically where you can set the parameters for what happens with your form. Um, by default, I think collect email addresses is left empty. Highly encourage you collect email addresses. This basically means that when a student uh, completes your survey, um, you'll know who they are because it collects the email address. So if they say something wrong in the first name and last name field or question you ask in the forms, you still know who they are. Re response receipts is important to understand what they are. That means basically if I take the quiz, I can get a copy of the quiz and my responses. So that's up to you if you want that to be checked or not. Um, restricting it to Gainesville means that they have to sign in with their student account in order to even see the Google form. And limiting it to one response is a nice feature but dangerous because if the internet goes down during the assessment, just be mindful that you will have to come back and uncheck limit to one response for that student to go back in and take that form. And be careful of these two down here. Edit after submit means basically that the student can submit, later on go back and click on the form and edit their submission. So be careful with that one. Uh, also seeing the charts of how others selected uh, on the survey is great for certain types of um, surveys that you create, but maybe not for an assessment. So might want to leave that blank. And then presentation, basically, you noticed when you saw, you saw the bar down there when I showed you the um, preview screen, that progress bar shows the student where they're at. Um, be careful of shuffle question order. You could do this, but it shuffles all of them. Um, you, could, you do have the option of shuffling the answer choices for each question if you want to by going to the three dots, and I'll show that to you later. Um, and show link to another response that basically means the student will see a link to do it again. Um, that's up to you. And you also have the option of writing your own co confirmation message, basically saying, you know, great job, thank you for completing this, um, whatever you want to put. And quizzes, because we chose a quiz in the very beginning, this has already been checked. You can always uncheck it. Um, and this part is really important for teachers using this for assessment purposes. What this means is immediately after each submission, the student can click and see how they did on the test. 
If you choose later, that means you're going to have to distribute it afterwards. Now, when a student completes the form as it is right now, they'll see the missed questions, what the correct answers were, and what the point values were for their question. Now I'm going to hit save. The last thing you will be able to do um, or need to do after you finish is go to the send button and this is how you can send your Google form. Now what you want to do is go to the link button right here, the chain link, highlight the link and then basically paste that in Google Classroom and students can click on it and take them right to your Google form. Um, you can embed it in a website if you don't want them to leave or go anywhere else uh, or you can also add it to an email group. So it's up to you how you give them the form. The easiest I think is to get the link and then put it in Google Classroom and when they click that link, this is what they'll see. They'll go right to the Google form. So thank you for watching this short tutorial on the Google form uh, toolbar on the top. And the next video we will cover this toolbar.